actually, I saw an article on, on uh, HTML5 Hub. I believe it was a video, but it was talking about how native might be optimizing too early. So say you're a, you're a company that's building a new product, right? And you've got this game that's maybe not that great, or you haven't tested it yet, and it's not a proven market success, you know? But you're doing it in native, and it's, it takes longer, and you have to compile everything, and it's, you just can't prototype as fast as you can in HTML5. But you spend all that extra effort making this native version. It could be argued that maybe you should make it in HTML5 where it's easy just to write some JavaScript and you can move so fast in a couple of days you've got this usable or playable thing. And then later, if you've proven that it's a market success, you come back and you make a native version. You know, It's faster and it's, it's geared just towards this operating system. That's actually a thing that happens even in the native world. I mean, Matt and I actually worked at a gaming company where the strategy was build it fast, deploy on Android, see how it performs. And rinse, repeat, iterate on it until it's good, then bring it to iOS, because iOS just has a longer release cycle due to the App Store review process. Or uh, Android is like the proving ground, right? right? And then the iOS would be like, you're on center stage now. And there could be lots of different comparisons across operating systems. So it's interesting that you're talking about uh, making this move from prototyped HTML5 and JavaScript almost to the, the more mature native. Because I see, and I'd be interested in your perspective since you're in the gaming world, I see a lot of excitement around sort of the opposite direction where we see like the experiments that Mozilla has participated in taking the Unreal Engine and compiling from the old school native stuff, the C and the C++, into the web technology. Isn't that maybe more the future of the web? Is, is authoring that sort of stuff so that it's easy to make those kind of games? It is, but that stuff, I mean, that stuff is very, very exciting. Don't get me wrong. But it still has the distribution and monetization problems that the web has inherently for games. I mean, and this, this is also something that's specific to our use cases, but, you know, people buy games on Steam, and they buy games elsewhere. But, I mean, if you're an independent game developer, uh, there's a few places where you really want to be to get your games seen and get your games sold. Um, and you do have to bring a lot of your own traffic, and there, there is the great part about the web where people can just play your game right away. You know, but just having a game that plays in the web browser is not enough to build a product on. You, know, you need distribution. We tend to wrap our games. You know, we, don't make, we don't make HTML5 prototypes and then make native apps. We wrap our uh, HTML apps using various technologies, so like CocoonJS for uh, mobile and um, the Node WebKit, which is an open source project sponsored by Intel um, for Windows, a Mac, and Linux. Um, and then you mentioned the XTTA earlier, which is also a very similar piece of technology in Crosswalk. Um, and these are all things you can use. PhoneGap, obviously. Tons of tools out there. Um, so you can basically take that one code base and you know, deploy as if it was a native app. And that has ups and downs, obviously. You know, like you're saying, the user experience on native is sometimes going to be a little bit ahead of even wrap HTML5 apps just because you know, you've got an app that's bundling a JavaScript interpreter a lot of times, running this code on the fly. It's in a web view or something else. You know, it's, Sometimes just not going to make that as smooth. In all fairness, most of the time it's not the technology's fault. That's it's true. crippled, right? For, <laughs> so Safari cripples their JavaScript engine on purpose they so that it's a second-class well, citizen. Yeah. And in the hybrid world, you know, Safari is more performant than the UI web view. Like they're sort of ignoring the UI web view. There's a security implication there, though. I mean, one of the reasons they do that, though, is because they have this security implication with memory, and it. I, I don't claim to fully understand it, but that's the reason that I've seen given and. You know, it's interesting to speculate about are they doing it for business purposes because they want you to drive towards the App Store, or you know, is it something to do with security? I mean, maybe it's a little bit of both. Was it like running out of memory? It's not running out of memory. It's the fact that uh, mobile Safari is a trusted application, and so the JIT can access the memory in a secure way. Whereas, you know, if the JIT was available to anybody's JavaScript, I guess inside of a native wrapper, I guess I don't know. Is it possible that we're headed towards this utopian future where those proprietary native platforms give way to web-based platforms like, for instance, Firefox OS? We're not there yet, but is it possible that that's our future, or are we always going to be in this constant struggle between native and... I've been and rooting for Chrome OS for <laughs> since day one. You know? yeah. Where is it? You know? It's, it's, it's really interesting. Right? You might be the only one. I'm not sure that anybody <laughs> else is rooting for it. I, I love the idea of a Firefox OS, too. I mean, that's yeah. Just, yeah. I say this as an HTML5 developer is native wins, right? If there's something that you want to make, you can do it in native. 
And that's not always true for HTML5. If you want to do something kind of crazy, or you want to do something with tons of particles, or lots of drawing, or lots of optimization, or it does something with the device that you're on that HTML5 just doesn't have a spec for yet, right. native wins every time. But it's also a different skill set you need to have, too. I mean, I could do HTML5 stuff, and I've done hybrid apps and whatnot, but if I suddenly had to do an iOS one, it's like, uh, OK, I don't have those. I have to go and learn how to do that. And similar with Android. I actually, yeah. I actually, I, I almost would disagree with that in the sense that I can think of several off the top of my head counter examples where the web seems to be winning over native. The one that jumps to, to my mind most readily is WebRTC. The concept of peer-to-peer -peer communication. We have that built into the web platform. Now, we, there may be some disagreement among vendors, like we said earlier, but it's built into the web platform. If you want to implement that same technology in a native app, it's actually a whole lot of work. And it's really hard, and there's no agreement between Android and iOS on what that should look like. The standards are totally bad. So there is an incentive to, in a sense, almost force you into to the web view world because you have access to a technology that's already been built mm -hmm. instead of reinventing the, the wheel. That's a really great point. And I think that when a lot of people ask me this question about like HTML5 versus native, you know, it doesn't always have to be one or the other. And certain contexts are going to be more beneficial versus one or the other. Like you said, WebRTC is really cool. I mean, the web is a networked platform by nature. And so a lot of the things it can do out of the box that you'd have to be writing socket code yourself for in C or C++ or whatever. And that's great. Um, I think an interesting example is Atom Editor. And this is an editor released by GitHub. And it's all based on essentially a, a very similar product uh, to Node WebKit. But it's basically Chromium running inside of a no UI shell. Um, and I used it for a while, but the speed is not there. You know, it's got this framework that it's built on that is getting in the way of it being a really, really fast, efficient text editor. And so I really wanted to love it because, you know, for me, I'm like HTML5, love it. You know, oh, a scriptable, a JavaScript scriptable code editor, come on, like that's right up my alley. And I used it for a couple weeks and I had to go back to Sublime Text because, you know, when I type a character, it has to be there. <laughs> before I press the key. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah.